Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the, the books. books, your online librarians. And we are here with a weekly reads. We have eight books for you today. So <laughs> stay tuned so that you will see all of them. We will put the adult books towards the end and start with the younger books. Esperar no es facil. It's by Mo Willems. This is an elephant and piggy book. It is done in both present and future tense. And this is the same as Waiting is Not Easy, which came out a few years ago. I think that these are actually funnier in Spanish. And that may just be because my reading level in Spanish is kind of low, so I read it probably more like a child would. And maybe it really is funnier in Spanish. <laughs> But this is a fun one. This one is Waiting is Not Easy. Piggy has a surprise for Elephant, and that surprise he has to wait for. But waiting is not easy. And Elephant's not very good at waiting, but Piggy tells him that he has to wait for a surprise. Is it going to be worth it? Well, of course. <laughs> but there's Waiting is Not Easy. Or Esperar no es facil. Scrolls of Zendaria by J.S. Jagger. This was provided to me by the author for a review. This follows the story of Nate McGray, and he is a peasant who is longing to be a wizard. In his world, only people who are wealthy and not peasants can be wizards. But he ends up getting on the good side of a guy who is the Red Wizard, and the Red Wizard convinces him to become his apprentice. As he's going to his the school that he's supposed to go to become a wizard, however, he runs into a very evil set of wizards who are bent on him not getting to the academy where he can learn to become a wizard. And they don't plan on starting a war. Can he get to the school for wizards? Will he stop the war? This reminds me a little bit of like Harry Potter, but it's like Harry Potter runs into Dementor problems and can't get to Hogwarts type scenario only. I like how the author twists the characters, how they grow throughout the book as a result of what's going on in the plot, which is always good. Plot's very well developed and I couldn't put it down. It was a very intriguing read. If you like fantasy, Harry Potter, adventure, you'll like this book. Tienes un pájaro en la cabeza. This is another elephant and piggy book. These are both review copies from Hyperion. This one is There's a Bird on Your Head. This book came out a couple years ago. And again, it's Mo Willems and Elephant and Piggy. Elephant has a bird on his head and he wants Piggy to help. And so Piggy helps. And it gets crazier and there's four birds. So Mo Willems won the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award twice. He's been nominated for it five times. And that's why they have this on there. This one just uses present tense. And so this is a really great one for a beginning level Spanish class or for a dual immersion class. It's simple to read, low reading level, or it could just be used by someone who speaks Spanish or someone who's teaching their child Spanish. It's a great one that way. It's hilarious as are all elephant and piggy books. And again, I think it's more funny in Spanish than it is in English. I found Pigeon. I won't tell you where Pigeon's hiding. Don't spoil it. I haven't found Pigeon yet. I found Pigeon in both of them. The Castle in the Mist by Amy Efron. This is a review copy from Philomo Books. This follows the story of Max and Tess, who are siblings, and they're staying with one of their relatives over the summer. Tess discovers a really old brass key and ends up, as a result, finding this castle in the mist. It has a lot of mystery around it, including a young boy named William, who tells them, do not go into the hawthorn trees. My favorite part. It's a really cool carousel where you pay to get onto the carousel by asking for a wish. And it's just kind of fun because it's this really a lot of mystery surrounding this castle in the mist. I like how the characters are just very well developed and very funny. They really draw you into the story, which is my favorite part of a book. The plot, it's not necessarily fast paced, but it has a lot of mystery surrounding it that just makes you want to keep reading it. I would recommend this for grades four to about eighth grade or ages nine through about 13. My next book is from the Disney School of Descendants. It is Allie's Mad Mystery by Jessica Brody. This is a review copy from Disney Press. Allie is the daughter of Alice in Wonderland and she loves to solve mysteries. She is a fantastic detective, so she thinks. Problem is, there's never any crime in Oridon. Cause it's all the good people. All the villains are on some other island. No, you have villains. You had villains that were invited to the school. Yes, but most of the villains are on the Isle of the Lost. Well, these villains are good in this school. Allie's best friend is Jane. Jane is the daughter of... Fairy the godmother. <laughs> of the fairy godmother. <laughs> Who is the headmistress of the school? I'm a closet Descendants fan. I could get through this book review someday. <laughs> the problem is Allie 
finally seeing mysteries and crimes everywhere where they do not exist. And people are getting mad at her because no, the teacher was just on vacation. The teacher was not kidnapped. No, the graffiti on the wall is art. We asked them to put it there. You so when she finds a real crime and a real mystery, nobody believes her. Ah, the boy who cried wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Only the girl who cried wolf. Shh. <laughs> Alice breaks her mother's pocket watch, but Jane's watch has gone missing and hers is another family heirloom. And there's more. It's the school's big spirit weekend and stuff is going wrong and breaking and Alice is like, this cannot be a coincidence. I am not making this up. So who is the villain? Because remember, there's no bad guys. It was a fun book, it was enjoyable. And if you are a fan of Disney Descendants, it is a must read. Allie's Mad Mystery is for grades four through eight. Shadow Run by Adrienne Strickland and Michael Miller. I was really excited for this book because it said on the back that it was Dune meets Firefly, and it was pretty true to that description. The main characters in this book are Nev and Cole. Cole, she is a captain of a, what's called a shadow fishing ship, which means they literally find this material called shadow that powers everything they own. But as a result of being able to harness this power for people, she has the ability to manipulate it, which is a very sought after ability. And Nev is not exactly who he says he is. And if I say too much, it'll spoil who he really is. But there is reason that he has found himself on Cole's ship. And he is trying to get her to go to another location with him for <laughs> nefarious purposes. <laughs> and he has some rival enemies who are have even more dastardly nefarious purposes that are after her as well. Will Nev and Cole see eye to eye? Will Cole get out of a very sticky situation? This book has a fair amount of violence and some torture scenes, so I would definitely say this is for high school and older. It's very action-packed, lots of cliffhangers, and I just was so intrigued with all the plot twists and churns that they throw at you. You're like, what? No! <laughs> know that this is a must read. <laughs> Especially if you're a sci-fi adventure mystery fan. Like I said, I'd recommend this for grades 9 to 12, all the way through adult even, or ages 15 and up. The Shadowland by Elizabeth Kostova. And if you haven't read anything by this author, this is an author who is very well researched. She writes for adults, even though her books really are probably appropriate content-wise. A high school kid would probably be fine reading them. The plot and the way they're written is not really going to appeal to most high school students. Maybe someone who's a very, very good reader and likes very literary fiction and historical fiction kind of mixed together. I love Elizabeth Kostova's books. I do like to read some harder works once in a while. She's a number one New York Times bestselling author for a reason. The, the research and the way that she writes history and research into a current plot line is just very unique and I love the way she does this. <laughs> this is a review copy from um, Ballantine Books, which is Penguin Random House. So Alexander Boyd has just arrived in Sofia, which is a European city in Bulgaria. The taxi arrives. She, she's helping this older couple and a man with a bag, and she's helping him into the taxi, and she accidentally keeps this bag. And when she opens the bag, she knows that she has to get it back to them. It is an urn full of ashes. Now, what I like about this is, of course, our main character has a past, and she has her own past issues to deal with and those are in here. But on her journey, she meets a cab driver and he goes by Bobby because it's easy for her to pronounce. And Bobby is interested in this too. The ashes are that story in Lazarov. Let's go find the police. So they try to deal this out with the police. The police aren't really trustworthy there. And so then they decide that they're going to try to track down the family. They have a name and address. So you follow them as they're tracking this down and you are meeting the people that Stoyan Lazarov has interacted with in his life. And you learn the history of this very unique, amazing, interesting man. It's kind of cute because you're meeting these characters that are kind of like grandparent figures. You're getting to know history through them and the history of the character. Some very unique, interesting information. But there's something more to what's going on. Bobby and Alexandra are noticing that they might be being followed and there's some interesting vandalism happening to his cab. And along the way, they pick up some more people to go on their adventure with them, like a dog and some other people. It's interesting. I really, really enjoy the history and the way that Kostova writes all of this together. And I will forever read all of her books. It's definitely for adults and I loved this book. So this book comes out the end of April, 2017, and I encourage you to read it. High Heat 
by Richard Castle. Of course, this follows Jameson Rook and Nikki Heat, the counterparts of Richard Castle and Kate Beckett. The victim in this book is associate of Jameson Rook, and the soon-to-be victim is Jameson Rook. Nikki Heat is on the case, and she can't get a hold of Jameson Rook, who is now her husband. And she's worried sick because the terrorists are threatening to behead her husband if she cannot solve this murder case. Will she succeed? I thought that Richard Castle's books couldn't get any more intense, and I was sorely wrong. This book was even more intense than any of his others. <laughs> You will have a hard time putting this down because it is very fast paced and moves really quickly and just keeps you on the edge of your seat. And of course the characters are awesome and well developed. If you like the show Castle or you like very adventure oriented thrillers and mysteries, you'll love High Heat by Richard Castle. This is a review copy from Kingswell Press. I'd say this is more adult, but you could go as low as uh, 10th grade, 16 and up. All right, so those are our weekly reads, and we will be back with more of those next week. And until next time, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That helps other people find reviews and to share the love of reading. Until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye.